Hey Ford owners, we're going to review and install the Firestone Ride Right Air Springs on this 2016 Ford F-350 Super Duty. Now we'll start off by taking some measurements on our truck. We're going to take a measurement of original ride height from the edge of the fender here down to the ground. And then once we get that, we'll put some weight in the back. Right now we are about 42 inches in height. Let's take a measurement at the front of a truck. Now it's gonna be a little bit different and it's actually kind of backwards. It's almost like 43 inches. So the back of our truck's already sagging down a little bit. Let's go ahead and put our weight into the back of a truck and see how much of a dent we can put into it. We'll see how much it sags down. I got this water tank here. It's about three quarters of the way full. So I'm gonna put it in there. Let's get our second measurement. With our suspension loaded up with the weight in the back, we're down about an inch and a half here. Now at the front here is checker measurement again, and it looks like we're up about a half an inch. So the front of a truck went up, which takes the load off the axle, which is not good for steering. Now with the weight pushing down on the suspension here, that takes the weight off the front of a truck again, so that affects steering and doesn't handle as well as it could. And also at nighttime, you probably don't think about it, but also if your front's pointing up in the air, so are your headlights, so it's not pointing straight ahead where you need them. Before we get to our install, let's go ahead and drive over our bumps course and see how the truck handles it right now. Now granted we're in a one ton truck so it's going to take a lot of load already built stock. But I'm going through the bumps and of course I can feel them. They're not too bad. So we'll get to our, our wide part of the parking lot and we'll do a slalom like this to see how it handles. Let's give her some gas and try it out. Okay we got everything installed. We got our load back in the truck. We put 40 PSI of air in the airbags. Let's see how we did. Measuring from the fender wheel to the ground once again. Original measurement was 42. And it looks like we gained an inch. Our, our front stayed just about the same. But I think if we add just a few more PSI in the back there, we could probably have the truck riding even. With more support in the back here, this will restore our handling we lost when we had all the weight in the back of a truck. Let's go ahead and go for a test ride now. Let's do our test course again with the bumps. Yeah, definitely a little bit different. You definitely feel the bumps and everything, but everything is more controlled. Uh, and I think going through the bumps themselves were a little bit more smoother. Let's go ahead and take them to the bigger part of our uh, parking lot and we'll go ahead and do the slalom thing and see how it handles. Oh yeah, big difference. Definitely more predictable. In fact, I'm going a little bit faster than I probably did the first time. One little detail that we have a liquid load back there, but I can tell it actually didn't slosh around as much going over the bumps or doing the slalom. This is what the Ride Ride airbags look like installed on our Ford S350. You have this, obviously the bag right here. You got brackets that connect to the axle here and also to the spring pack. And then it goes up to the top here where the bracket is specially designed to attach to the frame. Now our air springs are a double convoluted design. You can see a one and two right here. This helps with strength and durability and how it wears down. Also, which you can't see it, but what's known about the Firestone products is that this ring right here where the uh, airbag is connected to, uh, they're stamped into place and they are strong enough to pick your truck up by the frame to let the axle, axle hang down if you ever need to do that. Now a couple of neat things about this that the brackets are all designed for a frame of a truck. Uh, no drilling required. Patience is required in a few of the fasteners. But other than that it's pretty straightforward uh, and you need a couple of things to help lift the body of, off the truck and allow the suspension to move a little bit. But that's it. To start our install we need to remove the spare tire because we're definitely going to spend a lot of time underneath the vehicle. Also, you want a way to push the vehicle frame up off the suspension to give you some more working room too. For us, I'm going to use a pole jack with my lift here. For you doing it at home, I'll probably use a jack and some jack stands to help hold everything up and out of the way. Now we need to make room for our airbag. What we got to do is take off this jount stop right here. There's a nut on top and there's a bolt that goes through there. These are notorious for being really tight and really rusty. So you want to spray them down with some spray lubricant and then go ahead and take some time and back the nut off slowly when it comes off. Also, you may want to grip this with some giant pair of pliers because when it gets so loose, it'll want to spin around on its own. Now, a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench is what I'm using here. It seems to work pretty good.
Next up for removal is this bolt right here. We have to access it from the outside of the frame. And also this, if your vehicle has an aftermarket hitch on there, you may have to take off that uh, uh, the side plate on, it, on your hitch here to get access to this bolt to take it out. And then when you're all done, put your uh, hitch plate back in the place. In this case, on the OEM here, there's an existing hole in the plate, so we can just simply just unbolt it. And then we also need to take this clip out. Looking from the outside in, here's the bolt right here we have to remove. We're using a 13 millimeter socket for this. Using a small pry bar here, kind of help work it out of the way. With that out of the way, we can start putting parts on. This is our upper bracket that will get bolted to the frame. It'll sit right here. So we're going to take the 3 8 by inch and a half long bolt, like this. We're going to run it straight through the bracket and into that hole that we cleared out. to fidget around a little bit because that big bolt there and put it into place. It's a bit of a close fit so you may end up just kind of like threading it in to get to the other side. Okay we'll just install the slat washer. And also a 3 8 inch flange nut. This can stay loose for now. Now, next up, we got to apply some spacers between the bracket and the frame. Now, this will vary from truck to truck and even side to side. So, you got a couple of different uh, spacers to work with. You got a thick one here and a thinner one. And any combination will work as long as you get this to sit flat on the frame and the bracket is sitting uh, level two. You don't have to fidget around with this to make sure it fits correctly. And that's why we leave everything loose to run it together. Once you find the right fit, you want to take this bolt and go ahead and run it up through the bracket and also through the blocks. And it'll also will end up going through the frame. You see our bolt next to our wire harness? We'll probably end up zip this tying that out of the way so it doesn't ride right on the bolt. But for now, we'll go ahead and add a flat washer, which is a, long, which is a rather large one. And then another one of those flange nuts. With all our hardware in place, we'll go ahead and snug it down, make sure it stays nice and level. And then we'll go ahead and torque it down as specified in the instructions. To tighten this down, I'll be using a 732nd hex key and a 14 millimeter ratchet wrench. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with a bolt going through the top of the frame. At this point, we want to go ahead and lift the truck up to give us more working room because we'll be working with our airbag necks and lower brackets. I'm using a pull jack here, but you can use a jack and, and some jack stands as well. And even though I'm on a lift and all that, I still like doing one side at a time. Next, we'll do some sub-assembly here. We're going to take our airbag and connect it to our lower bracket We'll use this bolt right here, we'll thread in here, and we'll thread it into the airbag. We just need this uh, basically finger tight for now. We'll test fit it and we'll see how, which way our airbag will want to sit this way or this way with the upper bracket because there's holes in it to make sure it's in a straight line as possible. We'll go ahead and put this in place. These two points here and here, these corners will fit inside the U-bolt springs on the truck. And it will sit over this component right here. We'll fit it around the lines. That's where it 
This is where it helps to have that truck lifted up. You need only a working room. Squeeze it down. Put it into the hole that works best. Make sure this is in between the u bolts and spring. Push it far forward as possible. And then, you'll notice this tab I was talking about earlier will fit into one of these holes that's pre-existing here and here. It's on a bracket. And you want to push it into place on either one to check it and make sure which one fits best. At this point, I like to go ahead and lower my truck back down to the stock height. Make sure it's in a straight line, and then we'll make some marks on the brackets from the bracket to the airbag so that we can take it back off, back to the bench, and tighten it up down, and then put it back into place. So I think I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, what, I've done, what you want to look for is, yeah, the bag is going to sit like this because this is bottom with the frame, and the axle is going to torque the bottom a little bit towards the front, which is fine. We just went in a straight line going from front to rear. And once we have that in position, we'll go ahead and mark it the way we like it, and we'll take it off and tighten down our hardware on the very bottom here. So wherever it is convenient, maybe in a couple places to make sure you got it right. We'll line up our marks, get it hand tight. Double check our alignment. Then we'll use our torque wrench to torque it down to proper spec. And again, you'll find the specs in the instructions. There. We'll take a moment to put our hose connection in place. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. We want to make sure that we run up about halfway through the sealant right here. A 916 wrench work fine in this application here. Let's put our assembly back into place. Let's make our connection to the top bracket. It'll use this washer. This large nut that will thread on. Again, finger tight, make sure it goes into the slot there. Okay, and we'll get that finger tight. Next up is this lower bracket. This is going to slide underneath and it'll go in between these two arms right here, like that. But these tabs will fit in these slots. So we have to lift the whole assembly up and push it under. We'll put this clamp so I'll go around the U-bolts here. And we'll use the top hole, run through both sides. Once it's in place, we'll take your 3-8 slams nuts Put them into place. Again, we're just going to leave these as loose as possible. We just want it to guide everything together. Next step is going to require some patience, and hopefully, if you can find somebody to do this with some small hands, but install this 3 8 bolt from the inside out. These guys on the outside here are pretty easy to do. This ones that's in here is going to require a lot of patience. Again, leave everything loose so you can move it around what you need so you can get the hardware in place. So let's get everything in place. We'll go ahead and install our 3-8 slange nuts. Next up, so these long carriage bolts right here. We'll go into place just like that, one on each side. And our axle clamp will go into place. Okay, let's line this up loosely. 
Now I put my weight of, the weight of a truck back on the suspension, and I want to double check for a couple things. First off, though, I'm going to take this band clamp here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it down, and not super tight, but just enough to take up the slack because we need to check for clearance underneath here. So using a 14 millimeter or a 916. We'll just snug them up. You just want to do it evenly on both sides. Now I'm going to snug this down to make sure it sits flat against the U-bolts uh, here, but not torqued down or anything like that. Just enough to touch and hold it up. And we want to look for clearance between this component and the bottom here. We want it as close as possible, but without touching. We'll snug down these bolts here, again, just till they touch. I like to keep an eye on things, make sure everything's staying the way we, we uh, I like to keep checking to make sure everything stays in place as we tighten the bolts down. And then we can go ahead and do these guys here. With everything hand tightened at this point, we can go ahead and torque down all the bolts as specified in the instructions. With our driver's side done, we'll go ahead and move over onto our passenger side. Now there are a couple subtle differences over here, uh, and it's actually a little bit easier. Yeah, it's kind of a hassle working with this, but between the uh, spring and upper bracket, you got this heat shield to get sandwiched into place. You want to make sure that doesn't get in the way of the alignment pin, of course, there too. But there's all the same thing applies on this side. Now our upper bracket does bolt on to this side of the frame using a larger existing hole, and it has a little special uh, nut that fits in that hole, and it threads into it there. Actually, I find this side a little bit easier to work with than I did the passenger side. Time to run the air lines from our air fittings here. We'll run them all the way back towards the bumper to a convenient spot somewhere over here for a bracket to run our air lines into. Installing the lines to the fittings is a pretty simple affair. However, there's a couple details you need to pay attention to. You want to use a good pipe cutter or a tubing cutter. Make sure you cut a square. Then when you push it into the fitting, it'll only go so far and then it'll want to stop. Then push again, and it should click in just a little bit more. Sometimes it's perceptible, sometimes it's not, but then give it a good pull back on it and make sure it's engaged. So what I did is I ran it along the inside of the frame going back up to the airbag. I do have a lot left over here, and honestly, I'm gonna leave that in place and zip tie it up and not save it out of the way because in case there's a future upgrade to an airbag system, to an airbag and compressor system, uh, we have a leftover line that we can use uh, to tee these two together and go up towards the compressor. And we can use a cool rib zip ties that come with the kit to bind it all together. Let's go ahead and add air to them and do an air leak test. We'll put on a good amount, maybe like 40 pounds or so. Okay, we'll also check all our connections using some soapy water and look for bubbles. Hopefully we won't find any. Honestly, all we need here is some dishwashing detergent and a spray bottle. for a second and then you can see those little tiny bubbles coming up to the side there that means we have to take the line out and just clean it and reinstall it and that should fix the problem you may take a couple tries to get it right but let's make sure your line is cut and make sure it's properly pushed in all the way and you should be good to go that'll do it for a firestone ride rider air helper springs on this 2016 ford f-350